Adoration continues the N.J. DeWood translation of Algron. We'll adjust a little bit and have some comments, of course. And we have another prostration verse. Water of air, neutrality. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful, Aleph Lamin, this book is beyond all doubt, revealed by the Lord of the universe. Do they say he has invented it himself? Surely it is the truth from your Lord, so that you may forewarn a nation whom none has warned before you, and that they may be rightly guided. It was Allah who in six days created the heavens and the earth, and all that lies between them, and then ascended the throne. You have no guardian or intercessor besides him. Will you not take heed? He governs all from heaven to earth, and all will ascend to him in a single day, a day whose space is a thousand years by your reckoning. He knows the unknown and the manifest. He is the mighty one, the merciful, who excelled in the creation of all things. He first created man from clay, and then made his offspring from a drop of humble fluid. He molded him and breathed into him of his spirit. He gave you ears and eyes and hearts, yet you were seldom thankful. They say, once lost in their earth, shall we be created afresh? Indeed, they deny they will ever meet their Lord. Say, angel of death in charge of you will reclaim your souls. Then to your Lord you shall return. Would that you could see the wrongdoers when they hang their heads before their Lord. They will say, Lord, we now see and hear. Send us back and we will do good works. Now we are firm believers. Had it been our will, we could have given every soul its guidance, but my word shall be fulfilled. I will surely fill hell with jinn and humans all. We shall say to them, taste this, for you forgot you would ever meet this day. We too will forget you. Taste the eternal scourge, which you have earned by your misdeeds. None believes in our revelations, save those who, when reminded of them, prostrate themselves in adoration and give glory to their Lord in all humility. And after that thing, you know, those who are not proud, yes, tuck the room, you face Mecca, or as close to that as one thinks. In America, that tends to be north East is the closest. Who forsake their beds to pray to their Lord in fear and hope, who give an alms from what we gave them. No mortal knows what bliss will be in store for these as a reward for their labors. Now, whether you're talking about the dawn prayer or the middle of the night prayer that's voluntary or whatever, uh, when you pray, when you wake up in the middle of the night, I mean, like actually get up in bed and stuff, um, if it's between dawn and sunrise, it actually is a lengthening your life and preventing you from having arthritis and you won't feel as you need as much sleep when you do stuff like this. Um, and you might actually, and you perform better too. Um, but it feels like a sacrifice sometimes, right? Given alms, no mortal knows what bliss will be in store for these as a reward for your labors. Can he then who is a true believer be compared with him who is an evildoer? Surely they are not equal. Those that have faith and do good works shall be lodged in the gardens of paradise as a reward for their labors. But those that do evil, the fire shall be their home. Whenever they want to come out of it, they shall be driven back and shall be told, Taste the torment of fire, which, you're, which you persistently denied. But we will inflict on them the lighter torment of this world before the greater torment of the world to come, so that they may perchance return to the right path. And who is more wicked? Than the man who gives no heed to the revelations of his Lord. When he is reminded of them, we will surely take vengeance on the guilty. We gave the book to Moses. Never doubt that you will meet him. And made it a guide for the Israelites. And when they grew steadfast and firmly believed in our revelations, we appointed leaders from among them who gave guidance at our bidding. On the day of resurrection, your Lord will resolve for them their differences. Do they not know how many generations 
We have destroyed before them. They walk among their ruined dwellings. Surely in this there are veritable signs. Have they no ears to hear with? Do they not see how we drive the water to the parched land, and bring forth crops of which they and their cattle eat? Have they no eyes to see with? They ask, when will this judgment come? If what you say be true, say on the day of judgment, their faith shall not avail the unbelievers, nor shall they be reprieved. Therefore give no heed to them, and wait as they are waiting. And... Finish this this week. And isn't Sura 32 one of those ones that's good? Yeah, Sura 32 is one of those good ones to say on a Friday. Don Perrin per specific, 32 and 76. 